Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday. God bless you today. Hey, praying for you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I know things are going on in this nation. It seems like it is more divided than ever. We obviously, we see evil going on, but I want to tell you righteousness is happening as well. Understand, God is in control. Fear not. He won't leave us. He won't forsake us. And I truly believe what the enemy means for our harm, God is going to turn around and use for our good. So relax, rejoice in him. Get your focus on him. Don't be distracted by what's going on right now in the world. Get your focus back on him and you watch and see if you won't find your peace. And you know, we've got assignments to do. You know, it's starting to get a little bit colder now. And as we know in, in the Eastern Upper Peninsula anyway, that fall and then winter comes and I don't know about you, but sometimes when it gets cold out and boy, you just like being in the morning, you're snuggled up in your blanket and that alarm goes off and you hit the snooze button and you hit the snooze button. Well, I'm going to tell you today, don't hit the snooze button. The body of Christ needs to wake up. It's time to get up. Don't hit the snooze button anymore. Get up and let's get to work. Amen. Let me give you a couple of scripture verses today so you'll understand where I'm going with this. <clears throat> Romans 3.11 says, And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. Well, listen, things are getting short. The Lord's coming. We know that. When? We, we're not sure, but we know He's coming. And I believe we're closer today than we were yesterday. So we need to, as the body of Christ, wake up. Look, Quit snuggling under that spiritual blanket and quit hitting that spiritual snooze alarm. It is time to go to work. You know, we've got a lot of work today. We've gotten too comfortable. I want to go to James, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit. So bear with me and, and listen carefully. James 2, 18 through 20 says, But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe, and they tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Now, I want you to understand something. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. You cannot work your way to heaven. The only way for salvation, the only way to heaven, is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. By faith, um, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The only way. There is no other way. There's no multiple ways to heaven. It is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, having established that, if we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, our works, our lives should reflect that. Amen? So what, we're, what he was saying here is, you show me your faith without your works. And I'll tell you, um, if you have faith, how will people know that other than by your works? You know, we can say all the time, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. But we need to show that faith. Our faith needs to be an active faith, a doing faith. You know, I can tell you, I believe wholeheartedly that it is, fly, it is safe to fly in an airplane from one place to another. Absolutely faith, uh, safe. I can tell you that. I can say I have faith that it is absolutely safe to fly. But if I never get in a plane and fly in it, you're going to have some doubts, aren't you? But now if I get in that and I tell you and I say it is absolutely safe to fly, I believe by faith it is safe to fly, and I get in that plane and I fly, I have now shown you my faith that it is safe to fly. In the same way in the kingdom. Now, listen, doing works doesn't make you any more born again, and if you're doing a lot of works, that doesn't make you any more righteous. Our righteousness is in Him. Hear me closely. But because we are born again, we should have a desire in us that the Holy Spirit has given us to do the work of the kingdom. Now, the Bible says the fruits of the Spirit, you know, love, faith, joy, hope, you know, all those things, those are actually things that are in us that should be coming out of us. Those are the works that I'm talking about. So again, show me your faith um, without your works, and I will show you my faith by what I do. I have faith in God by what I do. By what? I trust Him. By what? By laying hands on the sick and, 
and, and believing and trusting by faith, they'll be healed. By walking in this earth and being um, on this planet, but not part of this planet. Amen? We have to be in the world, but we're not of the world. See, those are the things. And we need to be actually wor uh, reaching out and showing people our faith by what we're doing. It's not works that's getting you to heaven. Understand me. Hear me very clearly. But if you're a born-again believer, we, our works, should be showing our faith. What does that look like in your life? I don't know. I can't tell you. All I can tell you is you need to be obedient to Christ because Christ will lead you to do something in the kingdom of God. And most of the time it will be to help others, reaching out to others in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen? Well, pray. I pray that today that you were encouraged. I pray that you had ears to hear. Don't hit that snooze button. It's time to get up and go to work. Amen? <laughs> God bless you today. I pray that this was a blessing to you. Pray that you heard the heart of what I was saying. Pray that you had ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord was saying to you. Hey, it's time to start showing our faith by what we're doing. Not a time to be silent or just talking anymore. It's a time to be doing. Amen. Hey, I call you blessed. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.